Welcome to Under the Ancient Oaks, a monthly video series about paganism, polytheism, and living a good life during difficult times. I'm John Beckett, druid, priest, and writer. Prayer is one of the most common spiritual practices in virtually every religion. Some prayer is ordinary conversation, but other prayers are carefully scripted rituals with words chosen for specific meanings and repeated over and over again on a regular basis. Well, our guest this month on Under the Ancient Oaks is Lauren Mert, Senior Druid of ADF's Nine Waves Grove in Houston. Lauren, tell us a bit about yourself. Thanks, John. I've been a pagan for the last couple of years, uh, a member of ADF since 2012, where I'm a dedicant and have almost completed the first circle of ADF's clergy training program. Prayer is a regular part of my daily devotions and something that I'm passionate about sharing with the world. Well, I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian church where they taught that any scripted prayer was just meaningless words. And I see some of that attitude in paganism also. But it doesn't have to be the case. Scripted prayer can be deeply meaningful. Extemporaneous prayers like you're talking about usually come down to very short sentiments. Sentiments like please, or help, or thank you, or I love you. But extemporaneous prayers like that, conversational prayers, are truly only half of the prayer equation when we look at the history of prayers and the people who pray them. The other half is prayers that are set as liturgy. Noted prayer writer Kaiser Sereth in his book of Pagan Prayer makes the argument that set prayers develop a relationship between the person praying, the prayer they say, and the person being prayed to, and that that relationship allows a deepening over time so that the relationship can be more fully expressed. As well, set prayers give us something to pray together. If John and I were to say a prayer together, we would have to have something to say, and so we would have to plan in advance what we wanted to say. Set prayers also give us something to say in times of true crisis, when our hearts are in such grief that words fail us. Sometimes a prayer that we have said over and over again gives us both comfort and strength as we move forward. But most importantly is the concept of deepening into a prayer. The act of praying becomes something that you do over and over again until the prayer literally becomes part of who you are. It becomes part of how you think and it becomes part of your religious expression. And in that way, set prayers offer us something that extemporaneous prayers never can. So true. Now, a few years ago, I wrote a set of four different prayers for my daily spiritual practice. One in the morning, one at noon, one in the evening, and one just before bed. Those four prayers are now the foundation of my spiritual practice. What does what your daily spiritual practice, your daily prayer practice look like? So my first foray into set prayers came through a, a small obsession of mine, which I've had for many years since, well, since I was Catholic, and that was uh, my love of prayer beads. Uh, my love of the rosary turned into a love of prayer beads in general, and I spent a lot of time in meditation using beads as a way to help me count my prayers. But I found that I wasn't fulfilled enough by just counting prayers and counting repetitions of a mantra or counting breaths. And so I started to write prayers to go with my prayer beads. My current set is a set of three sets of nine prayers, each set devoted one to the ancestors, the nature spirits, and the great shining ones, which I figure is pretty appropriate for an ADF druid. As well, this year, John set us a challenge in January to deepen our prayer practice and to deepen things that we were doing as part of our meditative practices to go deeper in the series between Yule and Imolk. We're here at the Texas Imolk Retreat, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about what I have done for the last six weeks. Many religions have something called an orarium, which is a set of prayers that are prayed at different times of the day. The most famous of these is probably the Catholic Divine Office, but Jews, Muslims, and even ceremonial magicians have these prayers that they pray at se separate times of the day. I took a good look at my life in January and decided that I could commit to praying three times a day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once in the evening right before I went to bed. My morning prayer was the easiest one to write because it was the prayer that was similar to a daily practice that I've had for a very long time. 
I open with a short blessing to the fire and the well and the tree. I pray Kizer Sarah's Cosmos prayer, and I say a prayer to the Earth Mother and the Gatekeeper, who are the patrons of my level of ADF's clergy training. As well, I say a, pray a prayer to my own personal patron gods. My afternoon prayers were the hardest by far to write and are still a work in progress even after six weeks because I found it hard to find the balance between praying enough to feel like I've prayed and praying too little. And also, I work in a very busy marketing office and so I need to be able to set time aside to pray but also not be gone for so long that something blows up at work while I'm at prayer. My evening prayer is a prayer of peace and deep satisfaction, where I pray the, the Druid's prayer from Obad, or the Gorsed prayer, as well as a prayer that's based on one of the Shanti prayers from Hinduism, from the Upanishads. That prayer gives me great peace at the end of the day and finds me relaxing into sleep in a way that fulfills my mind with the kinds of things I want to be thinking about at the end of the day, as opposed to just the average everyday things that you think about when you're trying to fall asleep. This year, John set us a challenge, and I responded with these three prayers, but I responded with one more prayer as well. So technically, I have a fourth prayer that I wrote, and that's the I forgot a prayer prayer. And because I'm a busy person and I'm not a person who adapts well to changes in my routine, I knew that developing this practice was going to be one that I was going to fail at, and I was going to fail at it repeatedly. And so I set myself up for success in my failure and wrote a short prayer to pray before I restart my devotions because I forgot one of them. It's not very long, it's only a few lines, and it basically acknowledges that I understand that I messed up and that I'm asking forgiveness and moving forward as I go forth into my prayer practice to pray the next prayer of the day. These four prayers have become the foundation of my spiritual practice in the last month alongside of the other disciplines that I do as part of ADF's clergy training program. John challenged us to go deeper, and this is the way that I chose to go deeper into my faith. And I found it to be both a rewarding and surprisingly difficult practice that I would recommend to anyone who is looking forward to doing more in their life than just the, the eight high days of the year, or than just a simple prayer in the car, where the only kind of praying that they do is conversational. This kind of prayer allows you to choose your words carefully and to speak them meaningfully into the world so that they become a part of who you are and a part of how you live your life. There really is no substitute for prayer. The waters support and surround us. The land extends about us. The sky stretches out above us. At the center burns a living flame. May all the kindreds bless us. May our worship be true. May our actions be just, may our love be pure. Blessings and honor and worship to the Holy Ones. Lauren Mart is the senior druid at Nine Waves Grove ADF, located in Houston, Texas. If you're in the area and you're interested in druidry, and especially in Anglo-Saxon polytheism, drop in for a visit. They're on the internet at ninewavesadf.org and also on Facebook. The next Cups Convocation, which was scheduled for April in Fort Myers, has been postponed until November of 2019. Advance registrations were very low and the organizers could not gamble on a big last-minute turnout. If you're a Cups member, a UU-friendly pagan, or a pagan-friendly UU, I encourage you to sign up as soon as possible once registration opens late this year. Registration for the second annual Mystic South Conference in Atlanta is going strong. It will be held July 13th through 15th at the Crown Plaza Ravinia Hotel. I'll be presenting two workshops and a devotional ritual to the Morrigan titled A Gathering of Ravens. Last year's conference was excellent, and I'm sure this, this year's will be even better. I talk about prayer and other spiritual practices in my book, The Path of Paganism, which is available from Llewellyn, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, or directly from me. And I write three times a week on my blog, also called Under the Ancient Oaks, which is part of the Pathios Pagan channel. Lauren, thank you so much for being our guest on this month's Under the Ancient Oaks video. Uh, thank you for sharing your practice of prayer with, with, with everyone. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? Pagans can be people of prayer just as much as any other religion, and I would encourage you, if you haven't tried it, pray today. Thank you. 
And that's all for this month. May the blessings of the gods and ancestors be with you now and in the days to come.